there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part four and our conclusion of a vegetable bin build. Well, this has come a long way from uh, being hopefully what was going to be a two-part series into a four-part series, but there's a lot of information there uh, to be had if you wanted to make your own of this particular project. What we're going to start with today is uh, now that all the paint is dry on that mesh, we're going to start with the assembly of the face frames. And there we have a finished face frame. Um, the mesh is glued in, or sorry, is placed in the dados that we made. The frame is glued together. Uh, you just want to trim your mesh to size, as I explained uh, in, I believe it was last week's show, um, adding three quarters of an inch to each of these interior dimensions and uh, fit it in the dados and glue it together. And uh, that is your face frames completed. The the finished size of my mesh ended up to be a seven and three quarters by eleven and a half. Well, now that that's done, we need to glue up a piece for the top of our bin. So let's put these face frames aside, let them dry up, and uh, start on that lamination. Well, here's our laminated board for the top. And truth be told. I laminated this a couple days ago. I didn't think that we would need uh, a, yet another biscuit joinery uh, clip on this build series. Uh, you guys have seen it enough that you know what to do. And I've laminated two pieces together uh, on the edge joint here. And I'm going to cut it down to its final size of 12 and a quarter by 19 inches long. And there's our finished cut piece for the top of our cabinet. Um, what I'd like to do at this point is I want to take a quarter inch round over bit and I want to run it all the way around on both sides of the board just to kind of round off that edge and give it a little softer edge. Um, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you are routing cross grain first. That way, if there is any tear out at the end, hopefully it will be concealed when you come along the edge grain for the routing. Well, it's now time to mount the top of this. And I said earlier that I was going to route all the way around, but I kind of misled you a little bit. The back edge um, will not get routed because it's going to mount flush with the back of the cabinet. So you don't want that round over. It would just look odd. It really would. So back of the top piece, flush with the back of the cabinet. We're going to center it side to side, making sure that we have an equal overhang on both sides. And then I'm going to glue and clamp it in place. Now, I don't think that's enough. For, for my liking, anyway, I don't think it's enough. So what I've done is I've picked up some of these uh, double angle brackets here, and I'm going to be installing those on the interior upper lip all the way around to give this a good solid foundation. You just want to be careful here. Don't use screws that are too long for this application because you'll drive them right through your, your top and then, you know, it's going to look like crap. So a half inch screw is plenty, half inch long. Just put these brackets in place once you get it glued and clamped and uh, it'll be good and solid for years of use. Well, it took some pretty creative clamping to get that carcass together being the the top on the carcass. Um, I ended up using bar clamps and ratchet straps, but it held it together beautifully and now it's off to the side drying with those angle brackets all in place to hold the top down securely. Now it's time to assemble our bins. And you can see here I've done a dry fit. It's always a good idea to do a dry fit whenever you're putting a project together just to make sure that everything is, is seating the way that you want. Once you get the glue on, you can't make the adjustments. Um, 
The other thing too is the secret to any good glue up is to have preparation done. You have your glue there, you'll have a rag to wipe up spills, you have your clamps ready to go and <clears throat> these are just loose but they're pretty much in the position they need to be to get the glue on there and clamp them quickly. So let's get this glued up. I'll see if I can do it in, uh, in one take, in one shot and it's just a matter, it's as simple as applying the glue in the places that you need it, which will be in these dados, or the rabbits, sorry, my apologies, in the rabbits along the side pieces and sitting them in place because we already have everything here lined up and ready to go. So we'll just start with that, get a little bit of glue in each one of these rabbits to hold these bins together and sit it in place and once you get that sat in there it should hold itself nicely and you can carry on and do the other side now you want to watch for squeeze out there will be some it's inevitable oops with a glue up like this it is inevitable that there will be squeeze out but hopefully not too too much so we've got our glue placed in there We'll sit these pieces in place and we just want to bring these clamps in, make sure that things are aligned and gently clamp it together. Just like this. And we have our other clamps ready of course to pull these back pieces in and we'll do that as well. And with that minus our face frame this bin is glued up so now we can put this aside and uh, glue the other two together and after that we can put our face frames on but I think I'd like to secure this bottom a little better and for that uh, I think we're going to need ourselves a cordless drill well the bin is pretty much dried up now and I said I wanted to strengthen the bottom of it and I'm also going to strengthen the back. You've got to remember that when you're throwing potatoes and onions etc into these bins there could be a lot of weight in the bottom of here and I really don't like that just glue joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a line across the bottom of the bin and across the back of the bin 3 eighths of an inch in from the edge and once I get that done I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole at each one of these slats. For the wider slats, I'll drill two holes, one at each end, and I'm gonna put some glue in that hole and drive a quarter inch dowel into it, as well as through this backer board here, just to give it that little extra strength. So I'm gonna do that to all three bins, and uh, then once that's done and I flush cut those dowels, I'm going to give the whole bin a good sanding.
pins and they're just sat into place. Um, just a rough fit to make sure that they fit into each cavity here that they're supposed to. And we're coming to the point in time where we need to attach the face frames. But before we do that, um, we need to drill for our knob hardware that will be at the top of each of the face frames. So let's head over to the drill press. Well, you can use whatever hardware you want for your uh, vegetable bin. I've chosen these little glass knobs. I kind of like them. I kind of the. I think they're a little uh, old-fashioned. Um, anyway, you can choose whatever hardware you want to be able to pull these uh, these bins open. Um, but you're going to want to mark at the top of each long side of the bin a dead center hole from side to side and in the middle of these two inch straps and then check out the size of your hardware bolt and drill an appropriate size hole in your piece to attach your hardware with. So drill those holes in all three face frames and then we can um, move forward with attaching them to our bins. Well, we brought this over to the table saw because I really want to use the flat surface of the cast iron in order to assemble the face frames on the front of these bins. And the way that we're going to do this is with glue and dowel pins. Um, but I want the dowel pins to be hidden. So in the front face here of each of these uprights, two inches down from the top and two inches up from the bottom, I want to drill a quarter inch hole half an inch deep. Once you get those four holes drilled, you want to put a dowel center into each one of the holes. Now, if you don't know what a dowel center looks like, let me just pan away from this shot and show you what it looks like. This is a dowel center, and um, they insert into the hole that you just drilled, and they're used for marking uh, the center of that hole on another surface. So, you basically sit your uh, bin down here with um, on your flat surface with your holes drilled and your dowel centers in place and we're just going to get the face uh, plate of this or the face frame and you want to line it up and once you get your face frame all lined up the way that you would like it you just give it a little push onto those dowel centers and it will mark perfectly your holes for your corresponding uh, quarter inch holes. So we're going to drill now a quarter inch hole half an inch deep into these face frames and uh, once we do that of course get all four of them drilled then we will be able to insert some dowels with some glue, glue the side, and clamp this face frame on. Well, if you are careful with your marking and careful with your drilling, um, these holes should line up beautifully to put this whole thing together. And this is just a dry fit. There's no glue on here. But it seems to hold nicely. The clamps will pull this part here in. But it, it holds fairly securely, even without any glue. Um, so I'm going to glue these together now on all three drawers, get these face frames on, and then we're going to go um, over to the carcass and start cutting in the hardware. Well, the knobs have been installed in the top of our face frames and the holes that we drilled earlier, and all the bins have been sat in place. But unfortunately, due to the, the, the uh, design of this particular bin, as the vegetable bins open, they stop against the top surface of the dado-din shelves. 
and that makes it so that we have absolutely no access to um, getting at the screws to mortise in these hinges. So unfortunately, um, the hinges have to be mounted surface. So <clears throat> this isn't rocket science. We will just square up these hinges where they go on the front face of our carcass and we're going to uh, drill some pilot holes here to prevent from splitting our wood, screw them in, and once we get that done, this build is pretty much done. And the one set of hinges is in, and uh, because of the design, it stops automatically when it opens to a certain point. So, I'm going to install the other four hinges, and I'll see you when I get that done. Well, I've got all three bins set into place, and uh, let me just show you here what we ended up with. I think it looks great, and uh, I have to say I, I made this for my wife, and she's just tickled over it. She loves this little thing. I don't know why, but ah, it doesn't take much to make her happy, I guess. Um, guys, I wanted to talk to you about something with this project, and let me just show you this here. Um, what this is, is a set of plans that I purchased for this particular build, and um, I used it as base measurements. The problem is, is that normally with my builds, I have a habit of overbuilding, and I wanted to get um, the proper proportions, and I wanted to use somebody else's measurements. And once I got into these plans, I got to tell you, I'm not too impressed. Um, for starters, there isn't a dado, there isn't a rabbit, there isn't a mortise and tenon, there isn't any of this stuff. There's no dowel joinery, there's no dowels at all. Um, this entire thing, all of the joinery that I've shown you throughout this four-part uh, four series is all joinery that I've added to the project and I've had to alter the dimensions that are listed in these plans. Uh, it took an extensive amount of time to alter these dimensions so that the joinery that I wanted would work. The entire plan that I purchased calls for butt-ended joinery with like two-inch finishing nails. And I don't know, to me, I, I just don't find it acceptable. I didn't even like the fact that I used those angle brackets to hold the top down, but I needed something that was going to be sturdy, so that's what I ended up doing. Um, guys, if you want to purchase these plans for your base measurements or, or what have you, by all means, go right ahead. But please, I don't want you to expect that it's going to show you how to do the mortise and tenons, the rabbits, the dados, the dowel joinery, all that jazz. It isn't there. It doesn't exist in these plans. Um, the other thing too is that the plans actually have two bins at the bottom and a cupboard with the venting at the top with the mesh in it. And uh, I wasn't a fan of that actually. Uh, my wife requested, could we have three bins instead? And it was easily modified. The hard modification was the uh, joinery. But if you follow the dimensions that I've given you here on, on this series, if you want to get the plans, you can very easily cross-reference them and uh, come up with a really great project with some really great joinery. So, there you go. Uh, now you know how it is that you can get all the information to, uh, to build your own. And there you have it. A vegetable bin. Guys, this is a really great project. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the different joinery methods involved, as well as the, you know, the, the dados, the, the rabbits, um, the tongue and groove, uh, or sorry, the amortis and tenon, rather. Everything was just an absolute blast. It's a lot of fun. Pine is a very forgiving species. So, um, even if you make a few mistakes here and there, usually with pine, you can finagle it in such a way so that uh, those mistakes don't show so badly. Um, either way, 
Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope you've enjoyed the build. And I hope that you're going to go that one step further and get away from the computer and get out to the shop and actually make one of these for yourself. A uh, lot of fun and uh, very practical as well. So guys, thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.